Good evening and welcome to Pinellas County's E-Town Hall, Transit Alternatives for a Stronger, Faster Pinellas. I'm Bob Clifford, Executive Director of the Tampa Bay Area Regional Transportation Authority, otherwise known as TBARTA, and moderator for tonight's event. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we've assembled a panel from the Pinellas Transit Alternatives Analysis Team to answer your questions about transit options in Pinellas County. Joining us is Ken Welch, Commissioner and PSTA Board Member. Ken, welcome. Thank you, Bob. We also have R.B. Johnson, Indian Rocks Beach Mayor and PSTA Board Chair. R.B., welcome. Thank you. Next, we have Brad Miller, PSTA's new Chief Executive Officer. Brad, welcome to Pinellas County. Thanks. And rounding out our panel is Brian Smith, Pinellas Metropolitan Planning Organization Executive Director and Director of the Pinellas County Planning Department. Brian, welcome. Good to be here. Tonight's Transportation E-Town Hall is online and on call, meaning you can participate by either blogging in your questions through the E-Town Hall website, by listening on the phone, or you may be watching on PCC TV on Bright House Channel 622, Knowledge Channel 18, or Verizon Channel 44. The E-Town Hall blog opened Monday morning at 9 a.m. and we've received dozens of questions already. If you'd like to join us online, log in to the E-Town Hall website at pinellascounty.org slash E-Town Hall. We're also calling a random sample of 40,000 residents tonight right now to take part by phone. If you haven't been called but would prefer to ask your question by phone, just dial the toll-free number on your screen. That number will be available on your screen throughout tonight's discussion. If you're participating by phone and would like to take a question, excuse me, ask a question, press zero at any time and you'll be transferred to one of our volunteers who will take your name and question. If you'd like to receive regular project updates by email, please press seven. And whatever way you're joining us, keep those questions and comments coming in. We'll also be asking two survey questions of you throughout the event. If you'd like to participate, you will need to be on the phone or on the E-Town Hall website. So call in or log on now so that you're ready. These questions and a few more are also included in our survey online at PinellasOnTrack.com. Now let's get started. We'll have this conversation tonight in two parts. First, we'll talk in general about what we're trying to do for Pinellas County. And after a little while, we'll focus on where we are in the study. While there are other efforts to examine transportation improvements countywide, the focus of tonight's conversation will be about making the connections between the three largest activity centers in Pinellas County, Clearwater, the Greater Gateway Area, and St. Petersburg, plus connecting across the bay to, Pine to Hillsborough County and future regional services. Maybe we should start by asking about what an alternatives analysis is and what the team is working towards. This study will examine premium transit improvements that are right for our community, like a fast bus or rail service. The key questions being answered by the study are, what is the right project? Where will it go? What type of transit should we use? And how will we build it? For more detailed information, please visit our project website at PinellasOnTrack.com. Now let's hear from our panelists. First, let's start with Commissioner Welch. Welch, Commissioner, what's the most important thing for the community to know about the Pinellas Transit Alternatives Analysis? Well, there's not one thing, Bob. There, there are several. Um, but I think what folks really need to know is that elected officials, stakeholders, members of the community, citizens, the business community, neighborhoods are all a part of this process. And the goal is to build a transportation system for Pinellas County, not just for next year or the year after that, but for the next 25, 30, 40 years. It's a system not just for us, but for our children. Um, we talked about the AA that's going to look at connecting Clearwater Gateway in St. Petersburg with a fixed transit system. But I think it's important to note that that is a significant effort, but it is part of a broader transportation effort that is truly countywide. It's multimodal. Um, if you want to make the analogy in education, it's great to have a college and university system, but you have to have a K through 12 to make the whole thing work. Our bus system is really the foundation, and making that viable countywide is really an important part of this effort, and the AA goes right along with that. It really is the big picture. Absolutely. Mayor Johnson, what can we expect to come out of the Pinellas Transit Alternatives Analysis? 
Well, when the analysis is finished, what we're going to be having is a package that will show us where the exact route will be for our premium transit service between downtown Clearwater, Gateway area, downtown St. Pete, and then on over eventually over to Tampa to link up with their uh, improved, uh, transit improvements over in Tampa. Also, we'll determine what the exact mode is, in other words, whether it's going to be bus rapid transit or some form of rail, and uh, where the exact stations will be along this particular alignment along the way. So we're trying to narrow down exactly what the service will look like and uh, make certain it's exactly what the uh, residents and citizens of Pinellas County are looking forward to and what will you know, will best benefit them to get around quickly, efficient, efficiently around uh, Pinellas County and also connecting up to uh, Hillsborough County. Absolutely. Brad, you're the, you're the new guy here. Uh, welcome yes. to Pinellas County, first of all. Thanks. First yeah. of all, and, and, and based <laughs> on the fact that you've been to other parts of the country, what, what do you really, what do you see as, as the experiences of other parts of the country and how they address transit? Well, first, I, I, I'm very excited to have been here albeit only a month, but uh, it, it's great to be here in, um, in Pinellas County. And um, I, I have had some other experiences in other transit systems uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, while they were building their light rail. Uh, I had some experiences working for a commuter rail oper operation in the Washington, D.C. area. And then most recently, I was the head of the transit system out in Des Moines, Iowa, where we did a whole bunch of uh, express bus uh, service as well. And so, from, from that perspective, and from uh, having worked in all those uh, operations, what I've seen, number one, and I, I'm confident it, would, it can do the same thing here in Pinellas County, is uh, transform the area that it, it, it operates in. Uh, it, you know, all of the different types of modes and the different types of services, whether you're a bus driver or a light rail train or whatever, uh, pretty much operate in the same way. They get you from point A to point B, but what they, what they also do, which is uh, really what affects the community more, is uh, develop and transform the whole uh, development patterns around the, the, those investments. Anytime you invest in transportation, whether it's a road or a bus or a train, uh, you're going to get uh, development that uh, economic development and jobs created by that investment. And Brian, on that tack, that's that's really something that's really very important to Pinellas County, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, you've got a, a sort of a big picture of the relationship between land use and transportation. And so that is something um, not all the MPO group looks at, but the Transit Authority and T-BARTA and FDOT. And um, the whole idea is to sort of mix land use and transportation together in a good package and also have the public involved in it for the two reasons, because the transportation is going to affect the land use they're involved in. So that's why we've got this public outreach with, you know, like next week, next Wednesday night, we've got the Citizens Forum out on Omerton Road where people are encouraged to uh, attend and kind of see what all the maps look like, what the locations are, drilled into more detail. You've also got the uh, Pinellas on track the website for the program where you can basically find out all the information you want. You can drill into the maps and see where the station's going to be and see what the demand for the system is and get into all the documentation. But I think the important point is that we put a system in like this, it is going to change um, some of the development, the way the county occur, how, how, what occurs in the county. Um, we um, have a current population of roughly 930,000 and we're going to go to a population of something like a million and fifty thousand, which meant you're looking at over 100,000 population added to the county, and it's going to be primarily in the premium transit corridor between Clearwater and the Gateway in St. Pete. And there's going to be a lot of interaction on that land use. Plus, again, as you go with North County, other locations where you're dealing with trolley service, you're still going to have land use interaction. So it's kind of a, a broad subject one a lot of people involved with. Well, while we're on that topic, I, I mm -hmm. want to stay on that because I, I think it also goes to something that Commissioner Welch talked about was the future and, and the issue of uh, development, economic vitality and growth and really transportation mm -hmm. is a key factor in that, isn't it? It, it absolutely is. I know that uh, the term transit oriented development uh, was discussed at your last town hall and it's something the citizens of Pinellas really need to gain an understanding of. Um, we are often referred to as a built out county but we're really not. There will be, as Brian said, some additional population growth uh, in our county. The question now is, do we have smart growth? Do we have that growth directed? And this transit mm -hmm. corridor, this dedicated transit corridor, is a way to define where the growth will happen uh, in Pinellas County. And so TOD, or transit-oriented development, is a big part of this process going forward. 
And I'd just like to, to remind our callers we're going to be taking uh, calls from the public tonight and want to uh, make sure that if you have a question, please press zero. Uh, we'll get you on. Uh, also want to remind uh, what Brian just talked about a minute ago. This is really part of an overall process uh, in terms of uh, seeking input and, and really going through an educational and informational process uh, in terms of looking at transportation in the future. Brian mentioned that a week from tonight we're having an open forum at the Pinellas Realtor Organization on Olmerton Road. Stop by any time between 5 and 7.30 p.m. Uh, a little bit later on, we'll also have a, a survey on our website. We, we do have a survey on our website at PinellasOnTrack.com, and we'll also be asking some survey questions uh, a little later. A little later, we do have our first uh, question uh, here for us tonight, and, and the question comes to us and asks, why why aren't short-term projects being looked at? Dedicated bus lanes, rapid bus transit, articulated bus buses, redesign the routing. Shouldn't these projects be tried before we spend millions on light rail or commuter rail? And maybe if I'll start, RB, with you on that. Well, there are a lot of things that PSD we've been looking at to try to improve transit. But the first thing that we need to do these things is we need a, a different revenue source, unfortunately. Uh, right now, we've uh, been faced with declining property tax revenue, which is our pro primary operating source uh, for the last three years. But we've been planning for better uh, transit service, where we'd like to have more frequent service, uh, later night service. We'd like to be able to, to uh, get to Tampa International Airport. We like to do these things, but they all take more revenue. We can't just sort of uh, move things around and you know shift the deck chairs around and somehow achieve better transit. I mean, you know, the most expensive uh, element for transit is, uh, for instance, bus drivers, drivers and fuel. And uh, we would like to have uh, better service, like I said, more frequent service. We would like to have more express service. There's a whole list of things that we would like to have, and we are planning towards this, the, uh, the alternatives analysis and the premium service that we're talking about between uh, downtown Clearwater, Gateway, St. Pete, and then over to Hillsborough County is just one element of a greatly improved system that we'd like to work towards. But we have to not just plan for it, we need to find the revenue source for that as well. And Brad, as, the, as the, the transit agency head, I know that you're always looking at the issue of ridership and routes, uh, bus stops, improving bus stops, uh, which, which routes, which uh, lanes to utilize, right. all of those things. There's something you look at every day. Right, exactly. And I think maybe in response to the question a little bit, it's important to do both at the same time. The, the type of premium transit that we're talking about is substantially more investment as, as uh, uh, RB said, uh, that will require a new revenue source. But in the meantime, it's not like we're stopping our planning. We are right now doing a number of the uh, small initiatives that are being suggested in, in, in not just the short term, but in the next month. We are, we are providing a much faster uh, trip between downtown St. Petersburg and the beaches with a new uh, single ride uh, trolley bus that's soon gonna start on October 2nd. We've launched already some uh, better community uh, trolley service up in the northern part of the county from Dunedin and Tarpon Springs down to Clearwater. That's been a huge success. So, and then hopefully next year, we're gonna just start some more innovative flex routes up in the northern part of the county as well. So th those things are always in the planning mix, but it, it, it literally is the investment we're making in this premium transit, as uh, Commissioner Welch said, is for our children. And uh, so it takes that long and so we, it's good to be doing that planning right now, starting that planning now. It's something, uh, uh, Ken. Yeah, and just to add that, it's really a, you know, a two-part question. As RB said, uh, we've had a significant decline in our ad valorem revenues for PSTA. So just keeping that basic bus system uh, up and running so that the buses run on time, they're efficient, has been difficult. We've actually had to cut some service. We have had to raise fares. So that's one part of the fiscal issue. The other part is the alternative analysis will determine and recommend this uh, locally preferred alternative, which might not be rail. You know, the thinking is it, it probably will be, but it might not be rail. It might be express bus. It might be do nothing, which I doubt seriously. But the alternative analysis looks at all the options, and that will come back to us. So it won't be as if you're just spending money on something that hasn't been thoroughly vetted. It looks at ridership, where the folks want to go, where the activity centers are. And so that is really what the alternative analysis process does for us. And I can tell you, speaking from uh, TBARTA, the regional entity, you know, the way we describe it is that long-term vision 
focusing on short-term solutions that you incrementally build up to that long-term mm -hmm. vision, yeah. that you do it over time. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another question here, and just remind uh, callers that uh, if they have a, a question for us, uh, they can press uh, 7 on their phone and, and they can uh, get us a question. A uh, question here that I have uh, online says that we seem focused on uh, that, that St. Pete to Tampa connection. Uh, have we ever noticed the massive amount of commuters coming from Clearwater, Dunedin, Tarpon, Palm Harbor, and the East Lake areas? We need rapid transit to the Carillon area and other employment centers. I live in Dunedin and bus to Carillon, and a bus to Carillon would take one and a half to two hours today. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Uh, Brian? Maybe want to take to shot that yeah, first? Yeah, I think part of the plan is actually the same kind of service that would go from St. Petersburg up to the Gateway would also go from the Gateway to the Clearwater area, where then the other support links to the rest of the county. So I, I think you actually do have the whole idea, like Ken pointed out, is to have it operate as a system and to move people as quickly as possible. I think the key, though, for the service between the premium service between Clearwater and the Gateway in St. Pete is it's going to be in a fixed location so development can count on it so you have development occurring so one of the things they talk about having experimental service one of the things you won't find out is we want to have land use change and adjust along the corridor that's not going to happen if you put temporary service in so that that permanent service would be there then your other express service would go further up in the for other parts of the county we have another question from Karen on the <coughs> phone who asks us, will Seminole and Largo be included in the plans for light rail? Uh, RB, well, first of all, we haven't determined right. any plans for light rail. <laughs> right. But yeah. uh, to tell her about what we're looking at, we're actually going to go the next part to the map and the different technologies. Right. The, cor in. Yeah, the corridor we're talking about, it goes from the downtown Clearwater, does pass through Largo. Um, basically, we're looking at uh, going along more or less the CSX corridor that sort of parallels uh, Missouri. Uh, and then goes down to uh, West Bay and East Bay and on over to Roosevelt. So it passes right through uh, Largo to the Gateway area and then on down probably with a jog through uh, Pinellas Park and then uh, down to St. Pete. It doesn't actually pass through Seminole, uh, but there may be improved service later on as, as uh, Brian was pointing out. There's going to be different links, there's going to be different elements to the transit service that will be improved. Uh, we, de we definitely want to improve frequency uh, as many of the main routes, the north, south, east, west routes, as possible because the premium service won't work without the linking service also being improved. Well, why don't we go to the map that we have uh, so, so people can, can see what we're talking about in, in terms of, again, I think people need to understand and, and uh, we need to inform people that what, this is just one project of a bigger system, of a bigger plan. And, and what we're looking at here is you see that connection, what, what Mayor Johnson was just talking about, was going from uh, the Clearwater area uh, down through uh, Largo over to, to, to the Car Greater Caroline Gateway area, uh, down towards St. Pete, uh, jogging over to uh, Pinellas Park, and then across the bay to Hillsborough County, ultimately. So we refer to it as the Y, and those of us working on, on, on the project. Really looking at it from the perspective of the, just looking at preliminary route alignments, uh, proposed uh, locations for stations, uh, really starting to look at, at what what would we be looking at? What types of technologies? What the what the project would be? How would land use? We talked about land mm -hmm. use, a key factor in that. But really, as we talk talk about the modes of the technologies, the modes we're we're looking at various different modes and technologies, and we're looking at things that are considering things like what we call fast bus, uh, express bus, or bus rapid transit. We see some of those pictures on our screen uh, right now. Uh, Brad, maybe you share a little bit of your knowledge and, and what you understand goes on with those different types of technologies. Particularly okay. bus first. Yeah, certainly. Well, uh, the graphic on the screen is showing a uh, bus rapid transit uh, operation in U from Eugene, Oregon. Uh, and that has been a very successful service. You can see basically that uh, it is a bus, but it very much looks like a what you'd think of as a light rail vehicle. It has its own guideway or area of the street you can see in the in the picture uh, so that it, it no matter how tra uh, how much traffic is on the road the the, uh, the vehicle can uh, maintain the, a constant speed like a rail line uh, and then once it gets to a station it's got multiple doors uh, on the vehicle rather than sort of one or two doors like the traditional bus that, that open automatically kind of like a train 
uh, and then people can get on and off. They, it's much faster than a regular bus because they pay, they pay perhaps on the uh, station platform or at the stop so they don't have to wait. The bus doesn't have to wait there and dwell while someone's uh, you know, trying to get change out of their pocket. So it, it's really a, uh, an, an upgrade, a very uh, efficient upgraded uh, bus system, but it really emulates a lot of the characteristics of the light rail as well. We also are, are looking at various uh, different technologies. Maybe rail is, is part of that, so, that solution. I know we also have some examples here. And, and what's interesting, Brad, and we, we bring these up uh, from Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, That's which right. you were part of this project. That's right. Yes, I, uh, I was there when the uh, first one uh, came, uh, was delivered from uh, California. But uh, light rail, of course, uh, is uh, present in a number of communities. Uh, Charlotte uh, implemented uh, theirs uh, just after Thanksgiving of 2007, and uh, my understanding is ever since then, uh, crowds like that picture shown uh, have been uh, at all of their stations, especially for um, sporting events in downtown Charlotte, for big conventions and things like that. It's been a uh, great success for Charlotte. Uh, the one uh, one thing that was talked about earlier, and what you know, uh, was surprising and people did not expect, but the, the, the Charlotte light rail that is in the, that's shown in the picture <coughs> operates in only one corridor of the whole region. But uh, all of the bus system, or the bus system was also uh, significantly en enhanced and, co and changed to coordinate around the light rail line to feed people to and from the stations. And the, and even in other parts of the city that were on the other side of the city, the bus system ridership went up when the light rail opened. The whole network operated in a better way because of just in one quarter. So whether or not uh, the light rail or the rapid transit of whatever goes right by your home uh, is not necessarily the most important factor. It, it will help all of Pinellas County uh, and, and improve the transportation in areas far from the corridor, no matter, no matter what the technology is. I just want to remind everybody that they can see all of this information uh, in the photos on uh, PinellasCounty.org slash eTownHall and all of the photos that we're talking about and, and information are on there. I also want to, before we start taking some more questions, I'd like to pose our first poll question of the evening. And for those of you watching on television, if you'd like to participate, please call the number on your screen or visit the eTownHall website also on your screen. Now that we've heard a little bit about the different types of options that we're considering, which do you think is the right choice for Pinellas County? Should it be rail, some type of rail, whether it's light rail or something similar? Uh, if, it is, if you believe that's the case, press 1. Press 2 if you think it should be some type of bus that, that Brad was talking about, fast bus, express bus, bus rapid transit. If you don't think it should be either of those, that we should just limit our investment to our local bus service, press 3. And if you think uh, that we should uh, invest the same or less than we already do, please press 4. For those on the web, please click on your choice. Now let's go to the uh, next questions. Uh, I have a little bit of an uh, issue here. I've, I've lost a question. Here it is. Uh, we have from Mark who asked this question via blog. While either bus rapid transit or a light rail would be a great addition, I expect BRT would be an easier sell and faster, easier to implement. I've seen how downtown Denver's BRT system totally revitalized their downtown district and brought a lot of new businesses and jobs to previously blighted area. Make it happen. Ken, you want to start with that? Mark, we'll, we'll try to make that happen. Uh, <laughs> this will be a community decision uh, as we likely go to a referendum to talk about a new funding source down the line. But uh, as we said earlier, PSA does not have the resources right now to implement BRT. Um, and it def depends how you define bus rapid transit. Is it just more buses with greater frequency? Is it a dedicated lane? Is it signal preemption? It's, so really, how do you define that? But bottom line, if we want better frequency, we need more buses and more drivers. That takes money to do it. And so either way that we're looking at this, we're going to have to address the issue of having adequate revenues at PSTA to make this happen. Certainly in terms of timing, you'll be able to get BRT up more quickly than you can rail. I mean, that's going to be a nine or ten year effort. Uh, so uh, if the community approves this, you're going to see significant improvements in PSTA service um, in the next uh, few years, in the near future, and then rail down the line if that is the, the locally preferred alternative. And RB, I know that's something PSTA has been talking about for a while is 
the issue of bus rapid transit and potentially looking from, say, downtown St. Petersburg all the way over to the beaches and utilizing that uh, not only from a key connection perspective, but also to help revitalize some of that area. Well, absolutely. Uh, we've had some, some plans uh, in place for a few years now to uh, have the system going uh, bus rapid transit from downtown St. Pete to St. Pete Beach. And, uh, you know, we're looking at a corridor where it could you know, vastly help the land use, the businesses along that corridor. And that's a very important corridor for the tourist traffic that comes from St. Pete Beach, the people who would like to get to uh, uh, downtown St. Pete and just for development in general but as you know Ken was pointing out we've had these plans but we haven't been able to implement them because we don't have the revenue source to make it happen it's, it's the whole chicken and the egg thing we just can't get these things built we plan for it we understand the desirability of these things uh, but we just can't get there yet um, we're also looking at possibility of bus rapid transit from uh, downtown Clearwater over to Clearwater Beach uh, basically on its own lane coming across uh, the bridge there and then jumping over to south on the, on the Memorial Causeway to kind of avoid all the, the heavy traffic you have going back and forth to, to Clearwater Beach. So there are other areas that we're looking at for premium service, not just along uh, this particular corridor that we've been uh, focusing on uh, today. I'd also just uh, like to let everybody know if you've joined us late, welcome to the discussion. If you'd like to join us online, log on to the E-Town Hall website at PinellasCounty.org slash E-Town Hall. Or if you prefer to ask your question by phone, just dial the toll-free number on your screen. If you're on the phone, you can watch us on PCC TV at Bright House Channel 622, Knowledge Channel 18, or Verizon Channel 44. Our next question comes from Nick in Clearwater, who says that he's very impressed with the detailed analysis. This gives him a lot of confidence that we're moving carefully. How will we balance quick solutions and larger improvements in transit? We'll start maybe with Brad first. That's a good question. And, and again, uh, the, the level of analysis uh, is, again, probably uh, correlates pretty well to the level of investment needed. Uh, as several of our member panelists have said, um, in order to make really any kinds of advancement, significant advancements, rather than a route here or a route there, we are going to need uh, some uh, an additional uh, revenue to, to make that happen. Uh, but um, uh, there certainly is a, a lot of detailed analysis that needs to be done for this uh, for this rapid transit uh, these these corridors. Uh, I worked in uh, Charlotte for six years uh, during the time that we're in the phase we're in, and then another four years of design and engineering before the trains were up and running. So it, it is a, it's a marathon, not a sprint for these sort of bigger investments. But uh, as we said earlier in the conversation, we are, we're always doing uh, sort of short-term planning for new and enhanced services, always looking uh, at ways to do things better. And, uh, and hopefully we will be able to do those things as we continue in a parallel way with this longer-term study as well. Well you, well, you really have to. It's not an yeah. either or. Right. You need them both. It, 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 as, as several of us have said tonight, it works together as a system. You need the short-term improvements to make those bigger projects, longer-term projects, actually work. Exactly. So it, it, it does go together. Uh, we have a question uh, via phone from Jose in St. Pete who asks us, how much in terms of, of funding are Hillsboro and Pinellas County uh, doing and working together in terms of connecting the two counties? And I'll start with Ken, and, and I can also add some of that also. Well, well so. you can certainly from T. Barter's role in terms of oversight. We do have routes that cross the Bay 100X, 300X. Um, but in terms of a regional approach to dedicated transit, I really think personally T. Barta has a strong role to play in that. If we get to the point down the line where Pinellas has a, a light rail system, for example, or a BRT, and Hillsboro does as well, you'll need oversight and coordination region-wide to do that. Down the line, my daughter and, and her kids are going to be able to connect to Pasco, and Hillsboro, and even Manatee. So you need some regional oversight. But in terms of the funding, there really is no regional funding source at this point. And Pinellas County has really stepped up to even fund this uh, alternatives analysis, partnership with the county, PSTA, uh, T. Barta. And so I really think Pinellas is really leading in this effort uh, at this point. And, and Brian, that really goes to, to the point of partners. And, and for something as big as, as uh, and regionally important as that connection between Hillsborough and Pinellas counties, 
uh, as, as Commissioner Welch just stated, it's, you know, it's PSTA, it's Pinellas County, it's T-BARTA, it's FDOT, all That's part right. of that effort mm -hmm. in terms of making those connections and bringing it all together. That's what's going to be necessary to really make that across the bay connection, isn't it? It is, as well as actually uh, two other partners we have at, on our committee is um, we've got representative of the uh, HART, the transit program for Hillsborough County. We also have Hillsborough MPO sitting in as well so that we kind of merge their plans with our plans. So as we develop them, they'll know what we're doing. So it's actually not just regional agencies, it's also the local agencies working together. And thank you for adding FDOT. I forgot them. They're a great partner on this. Uh, just remind everybody, keep your blog questions coming in. If you're participating by phone, I said earlier press 7. That's incorrect. It's press 0 to ask your questions. Press 7 to leave a message. Let's take some more questions. From Justin on the blog is asking us, how many on our panel have recent rel recently relied on public transit? I haven't relied on it. I've, I've ridden <laughs> PSTA, but I, I don't rely on it. You've utilized uh, you know, Johnson, Brad, myself, yeah. I think all of us have. Huh? Yeah, you know, I, I actually ride it as much as I possibly can. I live uh, relatively close to uh, one of our routes, the, uh, the uh, Suncoast uh, Beach Trolley route. And, uh, you know, I, I take the, uh, uh, the Route 59 that goes from Indian Rocks Beach. It actually goes to PSTA's headquarters on the other side of the county, and I take that whenever I can. And, and uh, so there are, you know, quite a few times I've taken the transit around the county, and I try to do it on a semi-regular basis to see what's going on. And it's actually quite convenient, you know, leave the car behind and, and uh, get to where I'm going. I can work on the bus, and uh, that's what a lot of people do. You know, you're reading the newspaper, you're doing other kinds of things. You're not just sitting there focused on driving. So. Actually, I was going to say, I've also done it the hard way with the bike as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which is you have an extra procedure, which you got to load the bike on the front of the bus before you even get on the bus. <laughs> but, but Brad, that's a big part of, of, of PSTA's present program, is that Bikes on Buses program. Oh, yeah, and it's been very uh, successful, or I guess surprisingly successful, the numbers of people connecting by bike and then uh, putting them onto all, all of our vehicles. Yeah, as I sort of get oriented to uh, the county and to the PSTA services, uh, uh, I too, I rode the bus on Monday and uh, uh, spent my time, you know, meeting my new employees, the, the bus driver. I said hello to them and then tried to shake the hands of the riders and say thanks for riding. Um, and as we've been talking, most of the people on the bus are taking, are going to work, are go going to a job, and, and are relying on the bus system to get to get to their place of employment. So. It's, it's been great so far. And, and Ken, the economics of that are, are a big deal, aren't they? They're huge. And, and, you know, we talk about, you know, our core riders and then the choice riders who, if it was more convenient, and speaking to this question, frankly, one of the reasons I don't ride it is the time it takes. And, I, and we've had several comments. Right. Um, and that is just a function of the number of buses we have and the amount of operating funds that we have for drivers. Um, my niece uh, interned this summer and to get from St. Pete to the epicenter took her an hour and a half. That is far too long, and you hear those kind of comments from around uh, the county, but until we have adequate funding for buses and drivers, we're not going to be able to address that problem and get those folks who now have the choice of driving onto those buses. Well, and, and talking about funding, that's actually, and partnerships, which is what we've mm -hmm. been talking about here. Our next question comes from, from Deb via blog, who asks, how much money is it actually going to cost uh, to, to do these things and are we working through grants and bonds and I think the reality is it's it's about partnerships and it's everybody having to step up to the table. That's right. we, we will seek significant federal funding I think up to 50 percent if that's uh, you know the general uh, history um, but also the AA will give us some pretty precise cost estimates of what this will cost and, and that's what we're trying to get to late this year early next year. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a combination of funding. There has to be significant local funding, but you also mm -hmm. get money from the federal government, you get money from the state. It comes from various directions, and, uh, and that's where the partnerships all come in. Um, but a significant portion does have to come from uh, the local area, and that's what the, the feds expect. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they say, if you want these services, we can help you, we can provide uh, you know, capital funding and things of this nature, but they expect the local area to step up to the plate for significant operating costs, right. usually. And, and Brian, one thing, one thing I would uh, add and, and, and seek your comment on is, is because of that close tie with the issue of land use and development and, and changes and growth, really, um, mm -hmm. it's not just the public sector. It's also private sector investment as being yeah. a part of, of the stool, if you will, of funding, isn't it? 
That's correct, and especially around the station areas, you're going to have a lot of development opportunity, a lot more development opportunity than you would form before, and therefore we have to figure out a way how to get some revenue out of that to basically have the money to not only pay for the transit system, but then also to pay for all the development support that, that goes on around it. So, yeah, that's the, uh, like you said, the third leg of the stool, which is actually having development pay for part of the system. Well, to make sure you're enhancing your tax base, you're, absolutely. you're, you're economically mm -hmm. vital and growing. That's absolutely. what one we're looking the, for. One of the many benefits, absolutely, mm -hmm. TOD. I just want to remind everybody to keep your blog questions coming in, and if you're participating by phone, just press zero to ask us your question. Uh, we have a question here uh, via phone from Suzanne in Tarpon Springs. Uh, she asked the question, will this go to Palm Harbor, and what makes you think the governor will approve this? <laughs> I'll jump on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the governor approved Sun Rail, so maybe you know he's back in the in the in the camp of approving uh, light rail. But you know, this particular alignment does not go to North County, and that is an issue. And that's why folks have to again realize this is a significant part of a broader transportation plan for the entire county. And what will happen first is enhanced bus service countywide, and that will go to Palm Harbor. And you'll see that in the early term, if light rail is the option and is approved by the voters, you'll see that nine, ten years uh, down the road. And Absolutely. Mayor Johnson, it really is also uh, the issue of the, you know these these decisions are being uh, analyzed and addressed and decided locally, aren't they? Yeah, and this is mainly a local decision that we're talking about. We're probably going to eventually get to a point where we go to a referendum and we ask the voters of Pinellas County. Uh, to vote for a plan, an overall plan, as Ken was saying, for the uh, general improvement of the transit system. And one element of that would be this premium service corridor between the downtown Clearwater Gateway and St. Petersburg. But it really is going to be uh, up to us. It's not, you know, a specific uh, a decision that, say, the governor makes. I mean, there are, from the state of Florida and from DOT, there are some funding that would come potentially our way. But the, the large mass of the funding is really local funding that we would be going to the voters of Pinellas County to approve. Mm -hmm. And basically, for them to approve it, there has to be a plan they could see the benefits from that, that we're going to be uh, showing to them. That's what we're trying to get now is input from the public to see exactly what they would like to see and what's feasible and what would be best for uh, transportation, the future transportation in Pinellas County by extension for the whole Tampa Bay area. But really it's going to be as much as anything is up to us, the planners, the voters, the politicians mm -hmm. in Pinellas County itself. Uh, on the phone we have uh, Jordan in Largo who's asked what's the difference, I'm going to uh, throw this to you Brad, what's the difference between light rail and fast bus? Which is better? Well, it depends on how, what your definition of better is. Uh, you know, I, uh, certainly as we've been talking, um, every, every place that has implemented light rail also does a lot of investment in their bus system. And uh, the, the uh, type of bus uh, service that fits the needs of the different parts of Pinellas County uh, will be different. There will be uh, er, uh, areas that, that need more of an express or fast bus service that's maybe oriented more toward commuting uh, longer distances in a faster way. Some areas, uh, like parts of St. Petersburg and other more uh, densely developed areas, uh, need just high frequency uh, bus service of a different kind, not would have uh, many stops. Uh, I think th uh, what we're talking about for our premium services uh, Basically, the difference between uh, light rail investment and uh, the different types of bus service that we're talking about is, is mainly a reflection of cost uh, or infrastructure investment and how much uh, how much money there is to in, to invest in this uh, transportation. Uh, it is true that uh, once approved, uh, bus rapid transit could be implemented faster, although not necessarily that much faster than light rail. And both of them still have a very long process of federal approvals to go through, no matter which way you go. But uh, one, one key difference between the two modes uh, is, at least there uh, in the United States, their experience in uh, spurring economic development. Light rail is a no-brainer. Everywhere it's been implemented, uh, economic development has thrived around those stations. The bus system. Because the reason uh, the buses were created in the first place was to be more flexible and to provide more different options to people, and they do that. 
But uh, and so you can't necessarily point to places where the bus a bus system has you know built buildings next to it or it spurred the development like light rail. So that'll be a discussion point that the county and the resident and the citizens are going to have to take whether they want to uh, look at different investments in their community like that. Well, uh, sure. I was going to say one thing um, I might point out is several years ago when the idea of BRT or bus rapid transit first came up and we were looking at an earlier study, we actually evaluated the cost of putting that in. But in the pure sense, a sp its own um, rail or its own overpasses and the rest. And if you were to therefore build almost a separate road system, if you want to call it that, to get the bus, BRT, right. from Clearwater through the Gateway to St. Pete, it actually cost us more than a rail system. So you, it depends on how you do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, BRT can be more expensive or less expensive depending upon what you're talking about. Well, and it really also depends on, on as, as Brad indicated, the type of service yes. that you're providing. You know, is, is it more of a localized service? Is it longer distance? Uh, eventually, is it regional? You know, one of the things that I think we've all recognized and see as part of this is, is the challenge and issue that people don't care about jurisdictional boundaries. You know, you have that within Pinellas County with all of the individual jurisdictions, right. but you even have that as you go beyond the county boundaries. It's people are very highly mobile and looking for very different ways to be able to travel about the region. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind everybody to keep your blog questions coming in. If you're participating by phone, uh, press zero and you can ask us our, our, our questions. Uh, we have a uh, question here uh, from Chris who asks us uh, via blog, we will not be able to put light rail underground uh, and above ground is cost prohibitive. Is that true? The first part I agree with. Because <laughs> of the water table, we won't be able to put it underground. But when you talk about cost prohibitive in relation to what? I mean, the cost for adding additional lanes now uh, is increasing the right of way. We are a built out county. Um, and just in terms of our competitive position with other uh, cities and regions, Charlotte, for example, Atlanta, Dallas, um, we are, I think, the last large metro in the country now that doesn't have some kind of a dedicated transit, uh, fixed transit system. So um, the alternative analysis will give us some pretty definitive cost numbers and we'll know at that point, but just to add lanes is not a viable option. And when we get to the point, and it'll happen sometime in our lifetimes when gas is six, seven, eight dollars a gallon, then we'll be kicking ourselves for not making these kinds of investments now. Uh, are, are we going to, uh, to, to uh, Commissioner's point, and also what you talked about earlier is, is the issue of how do you fund these things and, and how do you look at cobbling together these partnerships? We have a question here from Frank who asked the question, should we even consider taking federal money when the federal government is in such bad shape? And I think I believe I heard you say earlier a lot of this is, you know, these are local decisions and it's going to be uh, us here locally having to, to step up to the plate uh, and, and address some of these issues. Right, but it's important to realize that uh, the state of Florida is a donor state as far as the money that it takes in and where the money goes for uh, uh, transportation. In other words, we're sending more money out of our state to other states than is coming in. So it would be probably a good idea for us to be still pulling in money from the federal direction because money is still leaving and going to Washington, and we still want that money to come back to our Good neck point. of the woods. It's our money that's going <laughs> is going there. Um, but it would probably be still a part of whatever we're doing. I mean, it's, it's, it's possible for a local area, a region, to fully fund uh, some of the improvements we're talking about, but uh, that would just mean that much more that's coming um, from our area while money is still going uh, to Washington or going to other jurisdictions around the country. And, and, so. and Brian, a great example here in Pinellas County is Pinellas County leveraging local dollars to receive federal dollars mm -hmm. like on US-19. Yeah, that's correct. And um, the more you can put some money on the table locally, the more you can then attract uh, money from um, the federal government and the state government. And actually what you find in the national scene is also is the more things get tighter even locally. If we did have revenue source, we could be better, more competitive because we maybe could put more money on the table locally than other areas and then maybe attract more money because there is, there is um, federal taxes like um, I'll be talking about where you, you actually are collecting federal money that's going into the system. So you want to get some level of that back. But he also pointed out about the fact that 
we could do the system with or without the federal state money. That we could just do more, and we want to do that. But we are doing this alternative analysis, meeting all the federal requirements to make us qualified to get the money, which is the primary reason we're doing it. Uh, we have a, a question from from Larry on the phone, and, and Larry's in Palm Harbor. Hey, uh, Brady asks, "What is PSCA doing about you know transfer points, at, you know where bus routes connect to reduce the waiting time to get on the on the next bus?" That's a that's a great question. Uh, as a uh, rider myself, and uh, from from my commute that I did on Monday, I have to transfer to, and uh, it. it, it it always raises a lot of questions in your mind if you don't see your bus sitting there that you're connecting to. Uh, we are uh, investing significantly in a new in new technology for the bus system. Um, we call it our real-time uh, bus project, but basically it's GPS system for all of our buses. Uh, right now, uh, the, the, we ha we <coughs> rely on sort of. I don't know, 1920s technology of a typical radio system to find out where the buses are. But um, we do uh, offer people that you can go on our website or check on your smartphone for the scheduled time when buses will come. But within the next year, uh, you, we will have uh, GPS uh, information about the real location of where every bus is. Uh, and, and so you will be able to look on your on your uh, iPhone and we'll have a PSTA app and, and, and you will be able to identify exactly um, how to make your connections most efficiently and then our own internal dispatchers will also have that technology and if and if the connection is not going to be made there's actually a system in place in the technology that will uh, adjust the buses on the fly so that the connections uh, get matched up again so the the, the, the Ability for folks to use the system as a network, I think, with this new technology, is going to be vastly improved. We have a, uh, a blog question from Jocelyn uh, Ken. As she asks us the question, how to address how would how would this benefit older people? Well, I think there are a lot of benefits. I mean, there are folks of all ages who ride PSTA buses. But I think overall, it's, it's the quality of life that this transportation plan, if implemented, would provide from transit-oriented development, uh, which uh, allows for smart growth, supports the tax base for the county. Those dollars are then reinvested in the county through county services. Um, you know, I just think overall, it is a move forward for the county, and it's not limited to any particular age bracket. We have a question uh, from JC uh, who asks, uh, RB, why can't we have a streetcar like they have in Charlotte? It would really help with tourists. Well, there are different kinds of railed um, or modes of uh, transits. And uh, for instance, you know, downtown Tampa, they have a streetcar that, that goes, uh, uh, I guess they call it a streetcar um, from the channel side area, downtown Tampa channel side goes to Ybor City. And often streetcars are probably more useful for circulator type uh, uh, transit. In other words, not for huge distances. And the distance we're talking about for the, the premium service from downtown Clearwater to uh, downtown St. Pete is probably beyond what a typical streetcar would be used for. But we are talking about in that sort of this comprehensive uh, upgrade to our transit system. We are talking about we are talking about circulators that would go in different areas that would link in to the more uh, long distance transit. So it's possible for there to be uh, some kind of streetcar, perhaps say in downtown St. Pete or downtown Clearwater, or some of these areas. Um, we haven't really looked too deeply into that particular technology just yet. Um, but I mean, th there's all of these possibilities that are on the horizon because there's multiple modes that we're looking at. I mean, you want to have a variety of choices and you want to find the right tool for the job. And so from neighborhood to neighborhood, uh, depending on the distances you travel, um, we're probably going to, in the long run, have different modes, th ones that fit, you know, do the best in each particular area. Uh, Brad, we have on the, on the phone uh, Teresa from St. Pete who asked us a question. What's the difference in cost between fast bus and rail? And also, how is that compared to what bus costs are now, bus operating costs, I, I would assume. Oh, okay. Uh, well, and, and again, I, I know that uh, having only been here a month, I don't know exactly what the cost estimates have been for, or at least preliminary estimates have been for the services that are proposed here. But, you know, certainly the, I think the, the general 
uh, sort of assumption is that uh, rail investment uh, is on the on the infrastructure cost, the fixed cost up front is probably th maybe uh, th three times as expensive for sort of the, the basic level of premium bus. Now, as Brian mentioned, you can, uh, like some of the systems they have overseas in South America and in Europe, you can, you can make a, more ex a bus system more expensive than, than laying tracks and uh, overhead uh, catenary wire than, than the train. And so, you know, so it's really kind of relative. Currently, PSTA's uh, annual uh, operating budget is about $54 million for the uh, 600 employees that we have and the 200 some buses that, that go around the county now. Uh, and, and a lot of our routes are um, relatively limited in frequency. We have a lot of different routes. We serve all parts of the county and are trying to do more. Uh, but um, the, the operating costs for these systems that we are talking about uh, once the once the uh, capital cost is uh, put in place, the operating costs and these are are actually quite comparable to the current bus system. I mean, you're still pay basically paying an operator mm -hmm. and for uh, energy, uh, uh, electric vehicle would cost less per mile than the current diesel buses. Uh, so the operating cost, which is the annual ongoing thing, is actually less expensive with these types of investment that we're talking about. Uh, along those lines, Brian, we got. Briefly, we can get one more question here, and this is a question asking us, are there plans for ridership studies in the future to gain a better understanding of how citizens would support either BRT or light rail options? That really is what the, the, the alternatives analysis process is, isn't it? That's, we basically have a very sophisticated uh, computer modeling program, and it's one approved by the federal government and by the state to basically estimate the trips we put in the computer the existing development and calibrate that to the existing bus use, but then we then we look at other areas, see how that use is for rail and BRT. We put that into the computer, so basically then we put that in with our projected future development, it's extra 100,000 people, et cetera, and all the development goes with that, and then we run the computer again, So it's but it's all calibrated on what the expected use from other areas is of, um, of rail, so I think we've got a pretty reliable system. It's conservative, so it basically would note the bottom line, but then it could be more than that. Terms of demand, and, and that is, and that is really what the study that we're that we're all undertaking now yes. is doing right. is looking at that, and all of that information as we develop it. We're we're not at uh, all the way through it yet, so we're still developing. These are the, these questions in terms of cost and ridership and things mm -hmm. we're looking at now, right. station location, all of that information. Uh, is provided on the website at PinellasOnTrack.com. Uh, would 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 love people to to go to that. We do have time for one more question quickly. I'm going to uh, turn this over to Commissioner Welch. Uh, we use the Pinellas Trail uh, almost daily for walking and bike biking. We hope the trail will be completed in a loop around the entire county. How does this connect with the plan? Well, the word multimodal fits here, and again, this entire transportation plan of which the AA study is an element is multimodal and includes biking, includes trails. Um, and so that is part of the ultimate plan that will be presented to the voters when we talk about an alternative revenue source. Totally, it, it, it is it's truly all the elements, Absolutely. including road. Absolutely. Including That's road right. improvement. Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Big part of it. Uh, I, as we close up the, for this evening's event, I'd like to ask you uh, our last poll question. If you'd like to participate, please call the number on your screen or visit the Eat Town Hall website. Now that you've heard about the Pinellas Alternatives Analysis, overall, compared to what we invest in transit today, should we invest more the same or less in transit? If you believe we should invest more, press 1. If you believe about the same, press 2. If you believe less, press 3. Or if you're not sure or have no opinion, please press 4. For those on the web, please click on, click on your choice now. We want to thank you for joining us this evening uh, and, and appreciate your participation. The town hall blog uh, and phone lines are now closed. If we didn't get your question or comment, you have multiple ways to contact us. You can go to the project website and submit your question online, leave a message at the end of this call, or call 727-346-8448 and leave a message for our staff. Uh, reminder again, we're also having an open forum this uh, a week from tonight at the Pinellas Realtor Organization on Elmerton Road. Please stop by any time between 5 and 7.30. Uh, and also be sure to take the Transit Preference Survey on our website at PinellasOnTrack.com. Uh, and just we have a, a brief moment just for final comments from everybody. We'll start with Brad. 
This is an amazing process, this E-Town Hall. When I was in Charlotte uh, and elsewhere, we, we had a lot of citizens come out and give us comment, but nothing like this. This has been great. Thank you. This is, this is a great decision for Pinellas County, one of the most important decisions that we'll make that will affect generations to come. Community needs to be involved. Go to PinellasOnTrack.com, be involved in the process. Yes, and you know, I think what this is really about is improving the quality of life for our residents and the tourists here in Pinellas County. And we have everything in Pinellas County except at this time a first class transportation system. And there are other uh, major metropolitan areas in this country, virtually all of them our size are larger. They spend more than we do and they have better transportation systems than we do and that has uh, great implications for our future economically and otherwise. So what this is about is getting us on track and up to par with everybody else in the country really. I think this is a really good process in terms of we've got the technical part down with the federal gu guidelines and the federal modeling process and now also we want to include the public involvement. So basically when we get to the end of the year we could have a technically well-organized um, program that also is one very engaged with the public so we can then go forward with some uh, decisions that basically have included everybody. Uh, we, we've heard a lot of uh, uh, words here tonight. We've heard you know, system, transit, development, economics, mobility, all incredibly important. Not mm -hmm. just today but out into the future and what we're really talking about is that issue of having that long-term vision really incrementally taking steps to implement that long-term vision, but also focusing on today. What are those improvements we can do today? Okay. How can we make uh, improvements day-to-day -day for, for citizens as simple as uh, making bus stops nicer or uh, adding more uh, bus racks or, or bike racks, you, know, you name it. That's all part of what this is, is part of, but it's also important that we hear from the public that we really receive input as part of this effort, as part of the county commission mm -hmm. effort and the, the work you all do, as part of PSTA's effort at your board meetings, as part of our own TBARTA board meetings or the MPO board meetings. Uh, a lot of activity, a lot of conversation. It's about dialogue, it's about hearing from the public. We want to hear from the public. We need your input to really implement and move these things forward. I just uh, would like to close with uh, just reminding everybody uh, to please visit the websites that we've mentioned during this evening's event. Uh, to find out ongoing information about transportation issues in Pinellas County and our entire region. Uh, thanks again for joining us and make sure you join us again for another E-Town Hall event. On behalf of the entire panel, have a good evening.